Hey everyone! In today's video, we're going to be talking about how Timothy Bliss and Terje Lomo describe long-term potentiation in 1973. Who was Terje Lomo? Terje Lomo was a Norwegian physiologist that specialized in neuroscience. Today, he's 84 years old. During the 60s, he worked in Per Anderson's lab as one of his students researching long-term potentiation. He was able to publish his individually researched abstract in 1966. At this time, his research had piqued the interest of several scientists. Timothy Bliss was very interested in long-term potentiation. He is a British neuroscientist that is 79 years old today, and he was also the head of the Division of Neurophysiology at the MRC National Institute for Medical Research in Mill Hill, London. He reached out to Per Anderson, inquiring about how to get in touch with Lomo, and he was able to get a hold of him, talk to him about his interest in LTP and further researching it, and eventually Bliss was able to join the lab. So him and Lomo decided to collaborate, and later on, we find them publishing a very important paper in 1973, basically talking about their findings and observations in regards to long-term potentiation in the dentate area of a rabbit. So in this picture, we see Timothy Bliss on the left, Per Anderson in the middle, and Terje Lomo on the right. So what exactly is LTP, long-term potentiation? Long-term potentiation is basically when synaptic connections between neurons become stronger with frequent activation. It's thought to be the mechanism underlying learning and memory. There are two very important glutamate receptors that are used to understand this on a molecular level, NMDA and AMPA. On the left, we have a figure of NMDA um, and the different ions and molecules that interact with it. NMDA is blocked by a magnesium ion. That's the purple circle inside the channel, um, right next to its binding site. When this is blocked, ions cannot flow through. When looking to the postsynaptic end of a neuron, typically NMDA and AMPA receptors are paired together. So what will happen? Glutamate will bind to the AMPA receptor, activating the ion channel. A T-polarization of the postsynaptic cell will occur after frequent stimulation of the AMPA receptor. In conjunction with this, glycine and glutamate will bind to the NMDA receptor. Glycine, both glycine and glutamate must be present at the same time in order for the magnesium blocker to be removed. Once the magnesium blocker is removed from the NMDA receptor, calcium ions will flow into the cell. With more calcium means more of an addition of the AMPA receptors. There's a process where calcium ions will support this um, addition of AMPA receptors to the cell membrane. And basically what this translates to is a more sensitive cell in regards to glutamate. So with more AMPA, glutamate has more sites to react with and it will be more likely that this synaptic area will be reactivated because of the addition of the AMPA receptors. Years to come, we see more major discoveries on long-term potentiation. For example, later in the 80s, we see a discovery on how magnesium blocks the NMDA receptors. We further understand the importance of how um, these receptors act for LTP. And we also see the quantile analysis of long-term potentiation.